Hello everybody and welcome to this video, the continuation of my Romeo and Juliet series. And in this video I'm going to analyse a certain aspect of Act 1, Scene 4. So for the first time in the play we have a scene which actually could be argued to be unnecessary. Act 1, Scene 4 basically tells us things that we already know. Romeo and his friends are heading to Capulet's party, but Romeo is not in the mood to go. And that's, you know, basically the thing that we learned in the previous scene, or in, certainly in Act 1, Scene 2. So, why do we learn it again in Act 1, Scene 4? Well, there is something we do learn about in Act 1, Scene 4, which is a little bit more about the character of Mercutio, who is developed in this scene. His long-winded speech about Queen Mab may initially seem to be unimportant, but it reveals a lot about the character which will prove important further into the play. So the Queen Mab speech, which you can see on the screen if I um, zoomed out, this is a, a suggested image of Queen Mab. Talk about her in a second. Then. So Queen, the Queen Mab speech, as you can see on the screen, is a really quite long speech. It took me hours to translate uh, into modern English, which is what the uh, previous video is about on this channel. Um, and some people think it's one of the most pointless speeches in the play, that it's just Shakespeare showing off. There are one or two times in Romeo and Juliet where Shakespeare writes a speech that just seems to be an exercise in writing. You know, let me show you how I can write this kind of really elaborate piece. But it is quite interesting what happens with Queen Mab. Um, the imagery related to Queen Mab starts off pretty much like um, a sort of child's fairy tale, the kind of thing I might read my children, or the sort of thing that you might find in a Disney film. So it starts off with uh, innocent images like the chariot, Queen Mab's chariot, is made from an empty hazelnut. So very sort of light imagery. But as it goes on, as Mercutio carries on talking, the imagery gets darker and darker. Then it moves on to lovers' brains and ends up with soldiers cutting foreign throats and even finishes with um, Queen Mab teaching uh, girls how to have sex. So there's a real chaos to the speech, and it gets darker and darker in terms of imagery. And I think Shakespeare uses that to symbolise the chaos and the darkness that is so key to the character of Mercutio. So to put it simply, this speech warns us that Mercutio is a bit of trouble, and we should keep an eye out for him later, because he's uh, he's likely to be either the cause of, or certainly in the midst of, some sort of uh, chaos. Now, Mercutio is also used to juxtapose the views of love that are expressed by Romeo. So Romeo has this very idealistic, some might call it unrealistic, romantic view of love, which causes him to moan, under love's heavy burden do I sink. Whereas Mercutio, on the other hand, offers a much more sexual view of love. In fact, every time Romeo says something, Mercutio turns it into a sexual joke. And when Mercutio asks Romeo by telling him, uh, sorry, when Mercutio says to Romeo, prick love for pricking, he is punning on the word prick as a slang term for a penis. So everything that Romeo says is sort of turned back and uh, made uh, you know, quite uh, rude and bawdy. So once again, we have in those two characters and in this scene, the two contrasting ideas of love, love as romantic or love as purely sexual, and they're juxtaposed together. So in the following scene, in the next scene, our two title characters of Romeo and Juliet are going to meet, and uh, we will see which type of love ultimately wins out. Now, it's quite interesting to think about this character of Queen Mab. This is just an aside, but it's something that is uh, interesting. Shakespeare actually did create Queen Mab. In the original, in the Bandello version, there was no Queen Mab. Um, so Shakespeare created Queen Mab out of his own imagination, you would guess. But Queen Mab as a character, since Shakespeare created her, has gone on to appear in a real variety of literature. And it's a sign of how popular and how widespread the influence of Shakespeare has been on literature that Mab does make appearances pretty much for the rest of time. So in the 17th century, this guy here, the poet Ben Jonson, um, wrote some poetry which included references to Queen Mab. In 1813, Percy Shelley here wrote a poem called Queen Mab, and we can actually have a little look 
and an extract of that. It was a huge epic poem in sort of nine different um, sort of chapters or um, I can't remember what they were called, uh, nine books, I think. But yeah, there's a, you know, a, an example from that on the screen. Um, perhaps the most famous example is um, Herman Melville. Oops, zoom back here, zoom back once more. So this guy here is Herman Melville, and chapter 31 of his classic book, Moby Dick, is called Queen Mab. And then over here is, uh, who, it's funny, isn't it, how almost all of the men have, um, you know, facial hair. This is J.M. Barry. And in The Little White Bird of 1902, um, we actually have an appearance from Queen Mab who um, is mentioned about going to visit Peter Pan. So I just thought I would show you, and here's the, the quote to go with it. Sorry about the dizziness. Um, I just thought I would show you, though, a little glimpse of the sort of influence that Shakespeare has. He creates this very bizarre, random character of Queen Mab that plays a very small part in the play of uh, Romeo and Juliet and yet that character is then embraced by literary um, people over the, next, over the hundreds of years that follow and appears in all sorts of poetry and prose and films as well and even non-fiction writing people often uh, have referred to Queen Mab. So it's just one indication of the extent and the influence of William Shakespeare. Everything that you've heard me say in this video is available in my ebook. Follow the link in the description for my Romeo and Juliet ebook, which is £1.99. Please do give this video a like and a thumbs up, and uh, please do subscribe to the channel, it really helps. Thanks.